Hi everyone, welcome back uh, to the channel. What I've been promising you guys is to uh, show you some of the quick and easy all prima methods to paint and render glass and I'm with acrylics and I'm going to do that today. This is a, a full painting that I just now finished for my uh, S201 online color theory class. We call it Path of Light, changing a painting through and making it, uh, you know, how you take a photo. Uh, identify the path of light and make it. But I wanted to start painting some glass. I'm going to have about three paintings here showing colored glass and different glass and different lighting setups. But I've been promising you guys to show you how to paint some of the glass. And so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is pull out some of the glass painting part of this lesson and show you here. We won't make the video too long for you, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to pick up some key points about what an artist needs to look for when they render glass. If you want to render it realistic or if you want to render it part of the painting here and how to do that quickly and effectively with a limited palette and with acrylics okay so let's go take a look at the lesson and as always if you enjoy it please like and share our video and you can check out the uh, more uh, you know lessons full-length lessons over on our jansenartonline.com our online uh, uh, classrooms okay all right i'll see you guys and enjoy cans and I want a little more yellow, a little warmer as I come forward there. But I want to, you know, I want, I just love this one inch brush. I want to uh, play the not only my brush calligraphy, but my colors here, modeling them through. And we'll let some of that come over here onto the other side and round over here, gray out a bit. And uh, we don't really have to touch too much into the glass because the glass will is carrying and magnifying a shadow which will we'll explain more of that in a minute but let's get back some of that nice light let's take let's go right into here which is our green our burnt sienna let's cool that off with some violet here model that together right here this is going to be some of our darks of our composition here right in here like this and as you look at that that's the darks of the composition here i'm going to add some extender right here some of the darkest colors of our composition are going to come right in through here with the glass now that could have a touch more green right in there and uh, so I'm going to drop some of that right in there right now. I'm not going to worry about this being absolutely perfect here. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back down to maybe my um, half inch brush here. And uh, let's just draw that, that back idea of that back. That's the back ellipse of the back of the glass there. Some of this just models up here coming forward like that. Okay. But I want, see it's a little bit modeled in here. I want some of these modeled colors coming off as I'm working the glass here. There'll be some of that right up there. And let's add a touch or two of that streaking right down. That's through shadow, compositional shadow, hitting the back of the glass back here, actually hitting the wall there. So we just want to model that up a bit, right back there like that. And uh, let's soften. Just a bit of that, take some of that, soften it a bit, a little green, a little light, and push some of that color right in here for right now. Just model and soften that so we see those colors right in there. Paint the, paint the motion of the glass. When you paint glass, I've been painting glass for years and years and years. I paint the movement of the glass, the shapes of the glass, just like I paint roses and stuff. I look for the movement of it through it here and we'll do that we just want to keep it kind of soft there for right now okay a little darker boom a little more violet boom a little green violet burnt sienna just a touch darker grab our little board here to set my hand you want to keep your ellipses as nice as possible I'm going to start right up here onto the chisel and just pull across some darker shadow right here like that right up into that area we'll put some lights and darks but we do want to you know more of it going on and shines and stuff we do want to add a few little just modeled areas here of darker tone we'll add some lighter tone but we'll put some of that in in just a little bit okay let's take some of this color and let's use that for our contact shadows back here so I'm going to hold my 
push my hand right here so I'm pretty safe, stable here. And I'm just going to add this and be a, be a bit careful with those lines. Try not to be too wiggly and stuff. You know, this is going to be what's going to give you realism to your object here. So let's just grab some of that model to color a bit because you'll get more modeled color in a um, in a glass shadow than you will under a lot of other shadows, and that's because a lot of the bouncing light and that's coming up and through the the, the painting. So you know, let that just kind of come through there. Let's just grab some of that. Now that's came out a little farther than I wanted it, and I'm going to push. Just a bit more here, and I uh, kind of hit my ellipse a little bit there, so I'll straighten that out a bit there. But this this helps me get a good idea. Let's push up. There'll be a, a thinness to the glass, which is actually the thickness of the glass. We'll have that right back there. Um, let me um, lighten this up just a bit, model this through here. Glass is mostly, and I have been teaching it this way since I did a lot of glass studies back in the middle 80s in color theory and taught glass, painting glass, beautiful glass, how to do that. And when I was a realism painter, for, I was a realism painter for many, many years. And glass, um, I, you know, this does a lot of things, but most of glass is painted with shadow. You know, when I first started my master's and stuff, and I studied this, and and I paint this glass, and and this one uh, judge said to me, glass is not painted with white. Because I always thought glass is painted with white. It shines. No. Glass is painted with shadows. And I so I went back to the Dutch and started studying Dutch techniques and stuff, and and I slowly started to learn that yeah, glass was not painted with white. Glass is painted with shadows. So I uh, started doing more and more and more with shadows. But glass is actually very easy to paint. It's what you don't paint. Let's take, actually, I'm gonna put the ellipse in up here and then I'll put some other stuff in and then we'll go move on. I'm gonna use a smaller, um, I like to, when I do detail work, I like to use a my the uh, more springy synthetic uh, you know, filbert, just like I do with, uh, you know, when I paint a portraiture or something like that. And I've got to be a little careful up here. You want to get these ellipses really nice here. Let's get this ellipse up here like this. Now, some of that ellipse is going to disappear. We'll disappear it. But for right now, let's put it in because we know it. And now when you're talking about the ellipse, where the ellipse comes, the ellipse comes just starts to round forward and becomes just shy of the side of the glass, which is the side of the glass is really the thickness of the glass. So if I was to, you know, put this shadow up here like this, and you'll notice that in the photo here, the ellipse is actually inside the outside edge of the glass here just a bit. So it doesn't come to the edge. It's just shy of it. It's just short. That makes your glass more real if you know how to do that, if you do that. So, because that's what happens in nature. Now, this side, we're just gonna let, we're actually gonna let part of the glass disappear over here. I'll put it in for right now, the shadow of it. But part of this, right out into here, is gonna get real thin. So I have to even get rid of my pattern line. Real thin and almost completely disappear. That's what helps make your glass even more real, okay? So while I'm doing this, let's just take some pine green and some and some burnt sienna here, and let's put in some of our daisies uh, in the in the the uh, basically the stems of the daisies here. There's a lot of little stem work, and you know how much you're going to do on this, how accurate you're going to render this. That's going to be up to you. Everyone will probably want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do mine, and, uh, you know, I will, boom, now, I'm going to probably change some of that there. I'm just going to let mine be more, um, and I'll probably add a, another one down through here, too, because that's a lot of daisies and stuff coming out of one stem. But, you know, my, uh, my photo here is uh, my... Uh, 
uh, setup is dried flowers, so silk flowers. So, you know, I just it was great because I, I told you I said Jessica, you know, did all the setups. As a matter of fact, they're over there. And uh, she said, there you go, Dad. She did all these setups for me to set up. I'm not real good at arranging flowers. I can put them in a painting, but, you know, arranging them out, oh, you know, that just, I don't have the patience for it. You know, push this here, do this. I'd rather do it with paint on my brush. But she set those all up and she said, there you go, Dad. And I was like, fantastic. And the neatest thing that was so fun, she filled them with water and stuff. And I said, the neatest thing that's so fantastic about it is that they're not going to wilt. So I can take the pictures of them a week from now it doesn't make a difference i love it you know so some artists say oh work from real flowers well you know what it's uh fall here it is raining it is cold it is 42 degrees outside you know and um no i'm gonna i'm gonna work from dried flowers a lot of times i like to work from uh um just, just light directly right from the monitor and a photo so you're lucky you got uh, something like this now so i'm doing just small uh small sketching strokes kind of here now on this one it, this is nice it has a little bit of the calyx there we'll drop that down i use small brushwork small sketching brushwork here and uh you know do you put these in early? A lot of people say, well, why are you putting them in so early? Well, these are just good, nice lines for me. I It's kind of like reinforcing or drawing a pattern. I may paint some of these out. I may keep some. You know, that is going to be, uh, you know, something that I decide on later. I may blur some out. I can, all kinds of things I can do here. And, uh, but it starts with putting them in now. So I'll get some of it in, blur some of them out. You know me, I like all the Prima more than anything else, so I like to do that, blur some out, and add a few other little lines and little things going on. I got to thinking, yeah, it might be nice to add something out in there, but that'll get just get some of that in there to begin with. Now, see, that already starts to look like glass, just with the simple things that we did there. Uh, and, you know, if we come in and we put a shadow on, it does even more. Now, there's other things. So putting in the, the waterline ellipse here, you can see that right in there. See the dark? It's right there. So uh, let's take just a bit of this stem color and let's just drop that in. Ellipse stays short of the thickness of the glass. Put that in your notes and remember that for the rest of your life. The ellipse stays short inside because the shortness inside here doesn't contact that edge. That paints the thickness of the glass. Okay. On and I noticed in all of my glass studies, you know, 40 years ago, that uh, light on the light side it actually gets a little closer. So when I painted a a lot of realism, I would actually bring the ellipse closer on the light side. Now in an all prima painting like this, now nah, you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to take a little light, which will come from this light will be this light that you see here is a through light bounce light. It's on the inside of the glass. The water ref and amplifies it here too, but it's that color. And it, so it's that color coming up and through here. And, you know, as an artist, you have to determine, you know, are you going to change that? Now, I'm going to blur this out just a bit, just to change that, make it more artistic painted here. Um, you know, if I was painting realism, I'd keep that line perfect, but uh, I'm going to blur that just a bit and um, soften that out. There is a little bit of a shine and stuff to it. We'll look at some of that stuff, but you might want to add a bit of that. Let's take just a bit of this light back in here for the bottom part of the glass. Let's just uh, model and just work that through a bit. Just model it up and through. I used to be so precise about this stuff. Now, I just love the all prima of it, you know. We'll paint a lot of the light and everything in there. As soon as we start to answer a few more questions about that, we'll paint some more stuff in there and answer some of that. But let's take a bit of this, maybe a bit of the violet. Some of this glass, see, I want to put some violets and stuff in it. And let's just pull down here, just a little more careful, right like that for that edge of that glass now that I have this brush that paints a little more careful here let's pull that let's give the 
impression here of the other side of the glass of that foot, that ellipse. Remember it stays, just give the, a light impression of it and move some of that color around there like that. And remember it stays just inside. Now, a little darker. There is darker, a darker color, more careful on the ellipse right up here. This is getting to the shadow here. We'll push that around. That line, that dark line, will actually come right around that ellipse here and then right to the front, a little bit of it to the front. Now, you know, how much and stuff that you're going to put on there, that's up, you, up to you. Now, as this is, happens on the light side, on the shadow side, it, go, it drops down to the underside here. All depends on your light source, and so sometimes you have to really study your reference photos to see. But So you see I'm painting with a lot of dark, right? Now I'm going to switch to the outside of the glass here and put that line down here onto the outside. I'll just soften my brush out here so I can just whisper that color a bit here. Out. We'll just soften that out. I like this a little bit, even though I see it in realism, painted in realism, I like it just a little bit softer on all the Prima versions of it than I do in realism. But there's a little more dark right over here. So what I started to do, and when you put that dark, I have it on the corner of my brush, and then I pull the color. I don't push. In other words, the color is on the trailing edge of the brush, and that gives you a better line of color right there. See? So I'll push that out here. And uh, so we'll put just a touch of that dark out there like that. Long ways to go, but that's going to get us started in there. It gives us a little bit more of our glass. I'm going to let that kind of dry up. I like painting glass layers of wet. I don't like blending glass on there. I used to, and I used to paint glass with oils and stuff there too. It's so much easier with acrylics, and if you paint tones, it is so much easier with the acrylics, you know, than it is to uh, paint it with, with the oils and stuff and wet and disturb something and everything. You can let that dry, and it'll be just fantastic. So while that's drying, let's just take our let's take some of these nice warm, some of these and some of these green some of these lights not quite as light and let's pull it right down in here right down into our glass and because that's really what glass does is it takes a lot let's get just a bit of the greens into that glass pulls a lot of the colors around so I'm going to carry down here into my glass some of my colors of my composition here right there into the water then we'll build it a little lighter right down here. Let's build that light that we start to see right in there. Just tap that in there. And uh, I'm using my six fusion here. You could go down to that smaller brush. Sometimes it'd be a little easier. But uh, let's just tap some of that around. Let it, let it swirl around a bit too here. And you know, I look for, I'm an Ala Prima painter, I look for strokes and marks. And I want to give a nice mark right like that. And uh, then there'll be that stem that will kind of, kind of cup and eclipse that just a bit there. Like that. And uh, let's put a bit of this back here. Boom, right like that. And, uh, some of that will just kind of round a little bit forward, a little motion of it coming forward. Let's get some of this nice shadow that we did and swirl that around right in here. And you don't need, it's tones. You don't need to be like super wet and blending and all that stuff. You just need to just stroke the tones on, you know, a good, you know, think about it sometimes, you know, watercolor painters and stuff like that, painting glass, and they do a nice thing, and it's just mostly painting the, the darks. Let's go a little bit lighter right up here. Add that into that just a bit more, okay? There'll be some lower shine, so gray this down a bit. There'll be a lower shine right here. If light comes through, you're going to have a reverse hit of the light right back there. So we'll just go ahead and add that real quick right back there. You see just a bit of that mark, but I know it's there. Uh, sometimes I will pull down with a softer, let's thin this out a bit, 
pull down some of the motion of the glass down like that just through just to model some of that through like that okay and uh, works we'll do you know we'll do a nice painting of glass here we'll do some more detailed glass and stuff because it is fun I'm having a good time with this glass been a while since I've painted glass. Let's put some of that lower light right back down here. Stroke or two, movement through. That's through. That's light coming through the glass on the other side, bouncing back the other side. You get little shine marks of it and stuff. We got to do that. Then we're gonna we're gonna increase our shine just a bit more in there as well. Isn't it fun how it just picks up shines and stuff? Let's take some of this. Add a little extender so it gets a little bit of movement in it. And let's not get just a little bit of that. Let's gray it up with a little bit of yellow. Get some other tones in here. Move that through. There, like that. See a bit of that other uh, bottom of the glass. And, and of course, it uh, will go a little bit lighter here. But it's you're uh, going to just kind of skip it around a bit here try not don't touch it too many times you'll smooth it out and we don't want to smooth it out we want to just give it some movement that's all see some movement to the to the glass here and uh, just step back on your brush and just kind of let some of that just move around back there like that what really brings it forward let's take some of this let's get this yellow in here because the glass carries and amplifies color. Let's uh, tap a bit of this yellow, lighter yellows, some of these other yellows in there, and then go with a highlight here, a little bit more white, not pure white, just has that yellow in there. And let's tap a few little marks of that, just the corner of your brush there. I'm gonna take some of this lighter yellow here kind of color though and bring that right up front here just a bit more into this part of the glass and let's go a little bit lighter bring some of that right in here I love textures and lights and stuff let's bring that right up underneath the shadow there the foot of the glass here right up underneath there and uh, fun, fun, fun. Bring that right up here. Let that just kind of model through. I like to get the draggy marks. That's all calligraphy. That's all yours and your calligraphy. But make sure you get that nice spot of light here. That's your uh, path of light. Make sure you get that right in there. Okay. And uh, we want to take some of that light... Now, it's not very big on this one here. I'm going to express it a little bit bigger. Watch the outside shape of your line here. And I'm just going to express a shine there, just like that. And uh, this particular one here, because I had a couple of lights on in the studio when we took it. But that's what these uh, extra little shines are down through here. And I'm probably just going to quickly suggest them. I'm going to increase, I'm going to increase my light into that one there, that shine into that one just a bit here. That's a personal choice. I like to do that. I'm going to increase the light here. Moving through this, just tap that with the corner of your brush. Tap in the shine and work that a bit. There is a and whether you do it or not, there's a lower light right here that's going to come to the front of this, the edge of the liquid here. And it is a little bit more precise there. And uh, then there's a dark. Do you see the dark there? To get that dark in there, I really should put a bit more of my shadowy color here. Soften that out just a bit more. Some yellows, a little violet here, soften some of that movement out just a bit right in there like that. And then we can take some of our other darks, the greens and violets and stuff here from our palette. I like to use colors I've already worked with because that's what glass is carrying. Those particular colors. 
pull down a little bit here and there, blur it out a bit here and there. Um, you know, tap through some of these darks back here like this, and so that, you know, nothing is completely perfect. And that's what makes real glass. Now, up here in the front, I'm going to take some of this yellow from the wall and look for that tone that's real close to what it had a little bit of violet in it from that wall. And I'm going to run this real close together. So I might even run it right out of the wall. So it's got to go a little lighter. And it's good to put some extender in there. Run it really thin and just kind of, you know, in the Dutch and stuff, we paintings we scumble the color a bit just kind of scumble over the edge of that glass bring those two together just a bit there and that's going to make it more realistic see how it just comes a little closer together let's take just a bit of that gray it cool it a little violet just a bit and pull down glass carries a lot of these colors let's just pull down Set some of that around here. You can see there's a double light of it, really, on that painting there. There's a double light of it. You can push that in, but, you know, that's kind of up to you how much you're going to do. I'm going to fix my ellipse up here with some of that color. Make sure my... And I'm going to blur that out just a bit. Carry that. Let that just blur out through there. It's kind of fun, you know, here in a just a little over an hour, you know, we got a nice little uh, light to dark path of light painting coming through here. Now, you start looking at your light. How much paint are you going to build back through here? Let's get a little of that cooler violets and stuff in here. And that becomes part of your artistic technique, your statement as the artist. How much of that's going to be, you know, back through here? That's kind of pretty. That's pulling some of those tones back up through there. Let's put a half tone light right in there. Light that up a bit. You know, how much of your calligraphy are you going to let stand into that? You know, grab some of this light. How much are you going to uh, let this stand and work back through there as you pull that forward? Right? Are you going to bounce? See, there's a little bit of that light bouncing right up through here. Are you going to bounce that up through there and let that pick up? And this is where you can start letting your brush calligraphy start to show through, you know? Do you let do you let simple little marks, you know, show up, you know, brush marks and stuff. This starts adding the the pure a la prima to it, the the working of it, you know, of the painting. How much you're going to add to it? Um, things and and around, you know, onto some of the glass and some of these back areas back here. So you can have a painting that is very much like the photo and super realistic, but not pretty, not artistically pretty. And that's where I like to, you know, take some of these, like these pinks and maybe throw in a bit of that pink up front here. And we'll take some of our warms and we'll paint it into place here. See, that just makes it, to me, that's what makes it more of a painting here, especially as I start to play a little bit more. Get some of those colors in there and let that play. Let's put the warm. I always like to, always like that whenever I play like that with that cool, I always like to sink it back into place with some warm. That's one of the things I like to do. And if you notice, I'm getting more calligraphy now. As I've, I've pretty much answered a lot of my light and dark questions and what I'm going to be doing with a lot of this. So now it's, matter of fact, it's just turning what I'm doing here into a painting. And that's the difference. We're away from, we're stepping away from what it is to capture the image and more into what makes it a beautiful painting, the colors the movement, you know, the light moving and disappearing around to the back, back here. Let's get some of that shadow back. Set that back there. See, brush strokes, calligraphy. You know, where is some of your calligraphy coming through? Some of this moving through. How much? 
you know. Um, you know, like the, the masters would just come right in here like this and just say, okay, boom, with a bit of that pink and that light and just let that sit there along that horizon line like that. That's pretty. Let's tone that down a bit. Put a bit of that pink. Let's gray that down just a bit more. Let's get a bit brave right over here and let that happen right back there. See, that's kind of pretty. Oh, that says right in there. You know, do you want to put the shine? You know, there's little things you start looking for. Shines even a little bit more. Do you put those shines up here in the front? You know, do we come right up in here and just drop that little shine in? Um, you know, how much you do, that's a... Uh, there's all kinds of ways. We need that front shine. That front little hit here on the front of our ellipse. You can tap it or you can just slide your brush a little bit or do a combination of both here. Um, in realism, and you don't really pick it up on this photo, but in realism, right in with that line, there would be a next little shine right up in there. And that would be there and see how that pulls that glass through. But see, I like that little pink showing up in there. Do you push that pink into some of these, uh, you know, into some of these daisies? Maybe with a touch of the burnt sienna. Do you add another little tone in there that isn't in, that isn't in what you see into the painting? But it, boy, see what that does. That just makes it kind of pretty. That's the artistic part of it here. That's the, and, you know, what controls that? Well, you know, like I said in the very beginning, we could put some blues in there. That's one way. But I always tend to lean towards at least the complements. Does that make sense? Because we, we studied that, the complements and adding colors of the complements and stuff. So I tend to lean towards adding the complements to it more than anything else. Like that. Okay. So you see that. So it gets you close. And it's kind of fun to take a look at the two together and you can see that I could use a little bit more highlight right up into there, tiny bit. Step back and see that. A few little areas that you might want to add just a touch more to here. But I think that is probably going to be enough. But to start to look, you see more of a light here than you do here. So the light here is that because that's on the back side of the glass. That's on the foot on the back side of the glass. So... Well, after you, you know, put your highlight up there where your light light is, you come back here, you've got to drop its value, drop its intensity and stuff, and that puts that light right back there on the back side of that glass back there where that should be. And just kind of model it around. And, you know, when it, you just want to model it around, don't get wrapped up in trying to copy exactly what that is because by the time it's all done, by the time you're all done here, your photo is going to be put away and people are just going to look at this and it's going to look just like glass to them. So, yeah, it's uh, I got that uh, just a bit. I don't want to stop painting. I've had a lot of fun painting this one. It's sometimes you just don't want to stop painting it. Got that ellipse there off just a bit. So I got to get some of that darker color here up underneath. This is the actual shadow of the water line here around like that and that works pretty well okay okay hope you enjoyed it we're gonna do a lot more I'm gonna do a lot more and um, you know we'll uh, we'll take a look at them and then uh, see increase your pinks remember there's also blue I said that the very beginning blue would be so pretty in here you know like my westerns I take little touches of blue and uh, you know add just little hits of those cool blues you know, around in some areas and stuff. You know, that's the artistic part of it that you might want to, uh, you know, play with and experiment with and see because the blues would be so pretty on this as well. It's pretty like that, but the blues would be really pretty. Or increasing your contrast. You know, let me just do this one last thing and then I promise I'll let you guys go. Let's go. You know, you. I just like to show you guys some different things then. You know, so increase, take your greens, your violets, you increase your darker contrast through here. That's what gives you your, you know, the more contrast right back in through there. So you can see, you can do it even more so than what uh, what the photo has. You decide that, okay? All right, I'll see you guys on another. We're going to do several of these. I'm going to do some colored glass too.
pass the light, okay? All right.